Um, I got to explain the numbering of our podcast because we're shooting from like four to twelve. <laughs> You know how I love how we t- just talk about the, the format of the podcast that you're about to hear, how different it is from the previous one that you may or may not have heard. Uh. All right, everybody. This is episode 12. 12? 12 of the Don't Tell Me My Business podcast. I'm Vince George, and joined as always with Chris Herndon. Hello, everyone. All right. Yes, yes, yes. We're at number 12. Now, I'm, see, right out of the gate here, I hate to tell you your business. But. I know. We're uh, skipping from, like, episode 3 to 12. I understand. But if you check our podcast, what we've done is kind of renumbered everything from the very beginning. <laughs> Uh, because I was putting like episode w- or uh, season one, and I don't think we're going to have multiple seasons. Uh, I think we're just going to keep on going. One <clears throat> big, long, endless season. And uh, I've only left uh, room for three numbers, so uh, episode episode 999 will be our last. Wow. Yeah, so we've got something to look forward to. You have something to look forward to with 999 being our last. Well, we've had an interesting night so far. Yes, yes, very good. Uh, we interviewed uh, Tony Acri. 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 I believe. <laughs> Acri, Acri. We'll have See, to check on that. I, I've been, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been calling him the wrong name for years and years, and he never corrected me. He did correct me tonight, and, and I've already probably screwed it up once. But well, tune, got... in, tune in to the podcast featuring the interview with Tony uh, about his, his novel, yep, Hand his, of God. Hand of God. And, I, uh, and if nothing else, you will learn the correct, uh, correct uh, pronunciation of his name. Hopefully. It will be out on, uh, on around Wednesday. It's, uh, it's Monday night here. Uh, this podcast will be out on Tuesday. I'm telling you the timeline like you're not already listening. You're like, it's, it is Tuesday, you dumbass. Hopefully you're listening. Oh, you, I guess you could be going to previous episodes. Well, I am talking to you in the future right now. This could be years from now and someone's saying... I want to hear some of Vince and Chris's old stuff. I've heard all their new stuff, which is fantastic. Only stuff from Mondays. Yeah, only the stuff from well, this the is a, This is one of our world-renowned Monday podcasts that will actually air. Tony Acri. On Tuesday. Acri. 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 Tony Acri's book is now a major motion picture, and he mentions in an interview that he had a, a, another interview with these two guys, Vince and Chris. And I'm coming back in time to listen to that. This is that episode where we actually interviewed him earlier tonight. Well, it's a good thing you didn't see your future self when you came in here earlier. Well, it is. Uh, I would have called a, a caused a space-time rift, uh, possibly destroying the universe. So it is a good thing that I did not see myself earlier. Uh, and I am a vampire, so I can't see myself anyway. Well, in the, mirror, in the mirror, right? Well, there's all these mirrors in here. That's that's why there's all these mirrors in here. Yeah, it's I was a little clearly, confused by that. It's clearly mirrored uh, on the ceiling mostly, um, and I. Not necessarily for vampiric reasons. Um, I thought maybe we were going to uh, reenact the climatic final scene of uh, Enter the Dragon. <laughs> There's mirrors in that. I have entered a dragon in here, actually. Oh, you know, hey, see, hello. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. What else we got going on? Uh, we saw the movie Machete Kills. We'll, we'll mention some of this later, but we are going to do an interview uh, an interview with Machete later. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna review that actually, um, and uh, it's not favorable. You're, you're gonna have to stick around for that because it's later in the show. I think that's actually machete. Machete. Better get that right before the interview. Uh, can we just acknowledge last Friday in general, please? It was not a good day. No, not a good day in the in the early lives of the DT MMB media. So if you're coming back Alex. in time to listen to our old shows, this it, is where you want to stop. Or you don't. You can go back further. Just skip weekdays number. I don't know number four. Maybe I it's think that was be, actually number forty nine. <laughs> it's gonna. I'm be not no, sure of the new numbering system that I, we're doing. It's gonna be eleven. It's gonna say eleven, but when we introduce it, it's gonna say four. So uh, just skip. Yeah, if you hear that, just run away. Just go ahead and. Yeah. This was our own uh, little version of four eleven, I believe. Yeah, it's a day in infamy. Day in infamy. Uh, we uh, we had a horrible podcast. We we weren't happy with that at all. And and then afterwards, 
instead of seeing something like Captain Phillips. There's some good stuff out of the theaters. Rush. Um, there's plenty of great, great things. Almost anything. Yeah, almost anything else except Machete, which we saw and we'll review later. But first, uh, let's let's go back to uh, some corrections and omissions. I've made a huge mistake. 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 You've made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake. Biggest little mistake I've ever made. I've made a huge tiny mistake. I've made a huge 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 mistake. Yeah, um, as usual, we have a number of corrections uh, to handle tonight. It'll take a good 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, so um, now one of the... If you've been listening to the podcast all, I don't know, what are we on now? 12. 12. <laughs> if, you've, if you've been listening to all 12 podcasts, um, you'll know that an ongoing theme with us is uh, we talk a lot about Ed Harris, especially his role in Apollo 13. Mm-hmm. Somehow Apollo 13 has come up, I think, in at least 10 of the 12 podcasts um, that we've done. Now, um, Ed Harris played the Michigan Troll, the flight director, and uh, last week we filled in the blank and said that he was uh, actually portraying Mr. Gene Krantz, Mm -hmm. um, who uh, was a successor to Chris Kraft as NASA's flight director for Gemini and Apollo missions. Krantz uh, is somebody that uh, has been portrayed in various films and also done a lot of documentary work himself. Um, And he's kind of, you know, one of the heroes of the the NASA, uh, the Apollo, Gemini, the the moon missions, especially. Um, He's a major figure. And uh, it, you know, we were talking about him last week, and that came up. Is he alive or dead? And I'm, I'm happy to announce here on the show tonight, just to get things off on the right foot, that uh, I believe uh, Mr. Krantz is still alive. Congratulations, Mr. Krantz. Yeah, he would have turned 80 in August. So well, um, You said would have. Well, I guess he did turn 80. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. He turned 80 in August. I thought we had a sudden turn of events there. <laughs> no, no. I, I just I was saying that kind of in the subjective case. But uh, uh, so he, anyway, he's he's 80. Um, and uh, we're uh, glad to announce that he's alive and kicking, and we wish him continued good health. Great. Awesome. Now, uh, uh, another thing that came up, and Vince, I'm sure you remember this. We were talking about Absolutely Fabulous. Mm-hmm. And, uh, a little ab-fab. A little ab-fab. And you mentioned uh, perhaps it would be a good idea to have an American version of that, and I said that I thought that that had already been done. Well, um, just to set the record straight... Um, there was a, a, a couple different projects proposed to do that, one of which involved uh, 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 Roseanne Barr um, and would have starred Carrie Fisher and Barbara Carrera. Carrie Fisher? Yeah. Princess Leia herself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds like a pretty – could have been a pretty, you know, pretty nice uh, production, but that fell through. Um, uh, there was also another, uh, another project started from a Saturday Night Live writer, uh, Christine Zander. Had worked on some scripts, um, but uh, that apparently uh, decided that there was decided not to to go on. Uh, and so the show, though, that I was actually thinking of was a show called High Society, who starred Mary McDonald and Gene Smart. And I, for some reason, thought that this was a an officially an American version of that uh, the absolutely fabulous um, UK series, of course, created and written by uh, Jennifer Saunders and co-starred with uh, Don French. So it was an American version. So it was in Australia, can- Canada. No. Well, it was an American show. Oh, but it, it was it was an, Ameri- not- it was oh, an okay. American version of AbFab. So I I apologize to all you AbFab fi- uh, fans out there. Uh, but the High Society is definitely what I was thinking of because I almost said Mary McDonald's name, uh, but decided not to. And I'm glad I didn't because now I've just admitted that I was completely wrong on that. Well, I think we should maybe consider doing a show with us and. Uh, Maybe call it abdominal fab or abdominal flab. Uh, that would probably be more. Yeah, that uh, might be better suited. To yeah, us. I mean, you know, it's a, you know, just gotta find your strengths, and flab is one of mine. Um, so anyway, my apologies out there for that one. Um, sorry, I steered you wrong, Vince. That's quite all right. I, to me, that means this is still open. We can still pitch this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're always looking for projects. Yep. Now, another project, uh, or another uh, correction, I should say, we might want to think of as a project as well. We can, we can do this as a project, too, if yeah. we wish. Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Apparently, there's been a lot of versions of this out there. Who knew? I mean, I had no idea. I mean, the first one was done back in 1908. 
Mm. There's been a ton of others. There's, um, I mean, there was one in 1954 by Renato Castellani, 1964 by Ricardo Frida, uh, Franco Zaffronelli, 1968. That was a big one. Um, and then, of course, the Boz Luhrmann version, William Shakespeare's Romeo plus Juliet in 1996 was a modernization of that story. And then, of course, the one that just came out this past week that we talked about um, in Trailer Trash. Hmm. I wonder why they haven't done the sequel. I mean, with with so many movies being done, you'd figure it'd be ripe for a sequel. Right. Um, yeah, I just find out that they didn't die in the end. Oh, wait, they died. In the oh, end. oh, spoiler alert. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, Romeo and Juliet uh, is out right now. Um, and it's directed by uh, Carlo Carly. Carly. How would you say that, Vince? Carly? Um, Carlisle. Not Carlisle. Definitely not that. But uh, we would. Um, that was adapted by Julian Fellows. And, of course, uh, is not something that was literally from the Shakespearean text, from my understanding. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what my notes say. Hmm. <laughs> so, it must, so it must be true. Yeah. Uh-oh, I see something coming up next that, that was very controversial the last show. Now, this came up uh, on the aforementioned terrible podcast on Friday, our weekdays podcast that we've already uh, yeah, considered suicide over. <laughs> but uh, one of the, one of the, the, the moments that, that came up was a little confusion on the movie The Thing. Actually, it was more of a confusion on the reference that was being made. Um, and I mentioned at one point that there were uh, multiple versions of that movie. I was sort of right. Um, there are three, there have been three movies, uh, based on the same book called who goes there by John W. Campbell jr. The first one was the thing from another world, 1951, Howard Hawks and Christian Nyby. Um, that would have been the original that I was thinking of. It was actually called the thing from another world, uh, not affiliated with the, um, with the soap opera another world that mm. I'm aware of, but there may be a connection there. And then, then of course the thing, 1982 John Carpenter version that starred Kurt Russell. Um, and then recently uh, in 2011, there was a thing, another a movie called the thing that was based on the, the novel starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead. This was adapted from the same book, but was actually intended to be a prequel of the Kurt Russell version. Mm. So just to clear that up, those are the three movies, 1951, 82 and 2011. So, uh, if you want to go and, you know, do a little research to understand where we were going with that failed attempt at comedy, um, feel free to go and watch all three of those movies and read the book. All based on the Adams Family hand that would come out of the box. Yeah, I, they took a lot of liberties with it, but yeah, loosely based on that. Uh, I think there was another one called uh, The Brother from Another Mother. I don't know. Maybe that was unrelated. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Let's go to our next segment. What do you say? I'd love to. All right, everyone, it's time for the segment where we review the things that we've consumed in the past week, whether it's movies, TV. This guy's got a good voice. Anything. This is The Look. Sexy. Oh, yeah. I like it. Much better than that previous song. A heck of a lot better than Roxette. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. I'll start off. I'll start off. I, I, I was caught up with uh, this season's Children Children's Hospital, Excellent. which is a favorite show of mine. Contains a lot of our favorite comedians and uh, actually has some writing done by Jason Manzukis, who is also uh, a, a big uh, a big fan of the show, from what I understand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not not the last show, but all the other ones. Uh, yeah, they're in Japan. Uh, which is which is interesting to me, of course, because I lived in Japan for five years, and I actually lived near an army base. It was Camp Zama. Now this isn't Camp Zama, but I can see the similar similarities. Uh, that's that's for sure. So I, I caught up. Uh, I think they're on episode I don't know thirteen, fourteen. But I watched uh, binge watched them uh, to get caught right, up. You probably uh, you probably seen more than I. I've seen quite a few of this episode, but I don't think I've seen every one of them. Mm -hmm. So if you binge watched, you got me beat. But They've they've moved now to their they're running a uh, a military clinic on the on, on the military base in Japan, correct? And uh, same same old That's gang, right. Henry Winkler leading the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Ken, Ken Marino. Uh, yeah, Ken Marino. Um, uh, was it Rob Hubel? Rob Hubel. Yep. 
and uh, Rob Cordry. Rob Cordry. Who's a producer of the show. 